In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest and greatest from HGLRC, their 60 amp ESC and also their F722. This is going to be a complete guide and also a complete breakdown of all of their new features. It's going to be beginner friendly and as well as advanced friendly video. Now with saying that, you can also check the links down below for the timetable and also you can check the video progress bar to skip to whatever section you want. The breakdown has the more advanced stuff where we break down every single component on the board here into more detail so you'll know how this works. Now let's take a quick look at some of the things they provide you with before we jump into that so you do get the flight controller itself now you can get this as a stack or a single with the esc i got it as a stack here and it's going to make your life so much easier because you'll just route the connection with just one wire here it's just going to make your life way way easier here especially with this wire they do give you four rubber garments pre-installed and five extras um, this is just talking about the flight controller here. They also give you some pin headers if you wanted to set those up and this cable right here. Now this cable is going to be used for a GPS setup. They have a dedicated port on the bottom right here just for GPS. And also we have four more connectors here. These are going to be for dedicated LEDs, RGB LEDs to be exact. And they have two buttons here, one for LED and one for boot. And this has a dedicated LED driver, which has some pre-installed effects for your LED if you were to set that up. Now, if you don't like the connectors, you can also direct solder the LEDs right here, which we'll talk about more in the connection guide here. So another really nice touch they've done with this, it's completely conformal coded. So it's going to be pretty good at water resistance. And we also have a USB type C connector for this. So this is, uh, I think the second board out there. The first one was uh, from iFlight here. And this is the second here. So with that being said, let's move on to the breakdown and see all of its new features and what this thing is all about here. All right, guys. So in this part of the video, we're going to be doing the hardware breakdown of this flight control and also take a look at some of the new features as well here. So I'm going to be showing you every single thing and what every single thing does. So it might be useful out there. And most of these flight controls are almost identical except for their features. For example, right here, we have this little chip right here. And that's actually in charge of a dual camera input. So we have C1 and C2. So camera one camera 2 now if you're installing one camera install your wire to the C2 because that is the default here so yeah make sure you take note of that we'll also cover that in the FPV camera connection setup so that's one feature that we have here which is linked to this little IC now obviously we do have OSD here which is something we always want to look for our 27 megahertz crystal which is linked to the or the resonator which is linked to the on-screen display now if we take a closer look back here there are a couple ICs here that are slightly different but the two main things down here are going to be two regulators. We have a five volt and also a nine volt regulator. Now this is very useful. For example, it's gonna give you a very clean, beautiful feed for your FPV analog setup. Not only that, the nine volt, you can also set up a DJI setup. So that's gonna be really great. However, with the DJI setup, you will need to solder to this board. And again, I'll probably cover that in the later section of this video. So that's a really nice feature as well. And it also has a built-in LED driver. So you can see all these little pads on the corners here. These are all meant for LEDs, which you could use one of these buttons right here to actually uh, change that. I forgot which one. I'll, I'll check in a little bit and let you know which one. One of these right here is in charge of the LED one is going to be the boot button. Here we have our 16 megabytes of flash memory also. So that's really nice to see for black box logs. And here we have our 8 megahertz uh, resonator. And here we have an F7. So that's going to be really great here. So this is rocking the F722. It's the baby F7, but it still has more power than the F4, which is really nice to see. Now, some other features it has are, for example, here's our MPU 6000 gyro. And right about here, let's actually clean this up slightly a little bit here. And right here, we have our MPU 6000 gyro, which is the gyro you kind of want. Here, we have little baby barometer. So they have everything on this freaking board. Now, one of these two right here is going to be for the LED driver. The other one's going to be for the voltage regulator. But I'm, I'm fairly confident these two right here are for the voltage regulator. And this is going to be for the LED driver, which is really nice to see here. Uh, it has some pre-built LED effects, basically, if you set those up. And it's, to be exact, an RGB LED driver. So that's really nice to see here. They, they, they've put quite a lot onto this right here. Now, if we take even a closer look here, we have dedicated current pad. We also could access the battery here. If we needed the battery voltage, we have an RSSI. So it has quite a lot of things going on for it. This will be for our buzzer here. And um, yeah, it, it, this is pretty insane right here. This is going to be for our VTX out, which we'll cover in a bit here. And these are more LED pads right here. You can see them. Uh, being covered up here so you could actually install so many LEDs the 5 volt regulator on board is pretty powerful to run all these LEDs basically so we have one two three four I forget what these are we'll double check them in a bit here 
So right now, this board has quite a lot going for it. I mean, you know, one, one, one positive thing out of this is you're going to have beautiful video feed and or you could later on switch it out to the HD setups, which is uh, as well something really nice here. And the two camera setups as well, which is pretty crazy. So you can do quite, quite a lot with this. This is a full fledged uh, board with every single feature you want. I mean, SD card, some people might want an SD card, but this should do the job for most cases right here. The 16 megabytes flash memory for black box, uh, which is really nice to see that they've even added. And it's kind of a must these days because you don't know what's really going on here. And um, yeah, so that's going to include it for this part. Let's go ahead and check out the next part. All right, guys, so right now we're going to go ahead and do the FPV camera setup. However, with this one, is not, it's still simple, but we have two camera input signals, which I'll cover right now. First of all, let's start with the simple stuff. Now, every camera just needs basically three wires, VCC, which is 5 volt ground and video. Sometimes they take more, but I always highly recommend you stick them on a 5 volt because cameras don't have much filtration and it can give you lines in your video feed, which is called noise, and it just could make you just give you an absolute horrendous flying experience so always stick it on a 5 volt so here we have two 5 volt pads you could choose any one you want whatever might be easier for you to solder so let's go ahead and set those up just like that so that's it now we have 5 volt for our camera next thing we need is ground you always need ground for anything you're gonna be powering so here's another ground pad and we're just gonna set that up just like that now we come down to the video line now the video line is really important here because we have two camera inputs this flight controller can switch between two cameras while you're flying which is pretty crazy so uh, common sense might tell you to put it on C1. So C1 and C2 are our camera inputs. So again, common sense might tell you to put it on C1, but by default, if you read the instruction manual, C2 is the default. So if you're new, I highly recommend you just stick your yellow wire right into the C2 pad. So we'll just write C2. This is C2, which is, which is the default by the software here. So that's something you need to take into consideration. Now to switch between them, you will have to go into the modes uh, section and assign a switch on your transmitter. That's a bit more advanced. I'm sure if you're new, you're not going to need that, but most people probably know how to set that up. And I think it's pretty well covered inside the instruction manual. If you take a look at the instruction manual, you'll find in the modes tab something called user 2. And basically, once that's enabled, like when you arm, once you enable user 2, then uh, the camera one will be enabled. So user two in the modes tab controls the camera input. So keep that in mind and uh, it should be very simple from there. Now for this wire OSD, if your camera has it, we could completely ignore it because this doesn't have any camera control and you really don't need it. I never even set it up when I have it. So that's something you, it just doesn't matter. You don't really need it. And that's how you'd set up the FPV camera on this board. And again, C2, very important. Let's move on to the next step. So now we're going to be covering the video transmitter part. Now, before you connect your video transmitter, you need to make sure what is the power input for the video transmitter. There's two types in the market. There's ones that take seven volts plus, and there's ones that only take five volts only. So you need to make sure you know which one it is. First of all, we're going to cover the seven volts plus video transmitter. Now, as the name implies, it's going to be seven plus volts. So anything above seven volts will power on the video transmitter. So in this case, what's really nice about this flight controller is it has a nine volt regulator. So let me just actually use a different color here. So it has a nine volt regulator right here. And that means it's gonna give you super clean voltage signal to your video transmitter, which means you'll have a high probability of really good video feed signal. Because usually when you stick some of these video transmitters on battery voltage, then you can get some weird lines in your video feed on specific throttle levels, which could be really annoying. So in this case, we have a full fledged uh, nine volt regulator, which is a huge thing. And this is something that I always love here. So if you're running the seven volt video transmitter, it's going to be very simple. You could either connect it here or to this one right here. These are, so these are both nine volt power outputs here. Next one we need is we are going to be needing the ground and the ground. We have two ground pads as well. We could just stick it on this one right here and we could just give it ground. Now the ground will work both for seven volt and the five volt. So now let's go ahead and jump into the five volt power real quick because it's just right here. So if your video transmitter takes five volts, you could either use this pad or this pad for the red wire. So we could just do it like that, boom. And we could say five volts. So if your video transmitter is five volts, you take the red wire from here. And if it's seven plus volts, it's going to take it from the nine volt and you'll be good to go into that perspective. So it's very simple there. Now we need to know where the yellow line goes. Now, unlike the camera input part where we had two, we only have one here. We actually have two, but it's just the same one. So we could either connect the yellow wire to this pad or to this pad right here. They're both exactly the same thing. So whatever is easier for you. So we could just go like this and go ahead and connect that. And now we have our video transmitter working perfect. 
So the next thing we want to take a look at is if you wanted to set up something like Smart Audio Protocol, where would you go about connecting it? Well, there's a couple places where we can go ahead and grab those. For example, we have a T3 right here because the, these protocols usually go on a T pad. So for example, here is my Smart Audio for this uh, video transmitter here. So I would go here and I would have to cross over and I would jump right here because these two are exactly the same thing also for some reason. So we could just do it like this just to make it easier. So you could choose either this pad or this pad. They're both identical. And now like this, UART3 in the Betaflight's ports tab is going to be in charge of the protocol that you're using, whether it's Smart Audio and or the IRC Tramp protocol. So that's where you want to set that up. UART3 is meant for the Smart Audio protocol. However, you could also put this on any other T-pad. However, they have it here for a reason, so you could easily take advantage of it so you could have all your wires next to each other. So and again, just a quick recap, 5 volt line, if your video transmitter is 5 volt, you take it from one of these two. If yours is 7 plus volts, you take it from this right here, so we'll say 9 volts, which is this one right there. So this is a 9 volt and this is the 5 volt. That's how you'd power it up. And now let's go ahead and jump into the DJI connection setup. All right, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and cover the DJI Air unit. Now there's three ways to connect it. So the first way is just basically power and it'll just act as a HD camera and just give you your feed and nothing else. The second way is going to be as a camera again, but also have telemetry information such as your battery voltage and your flying time, your mode that you're flying in. And it'll also allow you to change your PIDs and settings of your flight control also from it. And the last one is to have it with the telemetry power and also being able to control the quadcopter with the DJI remote if you have the remote. Uh, if you have the remote, it's going to be these last two wires. First of all, let's start with the basic setup. So if you just wanted this to power up and record and do nothing else, then what you want to do is you want to grab your red wire here, uh, which is going to go to a 9 volt pad. So we can go to uh, this one here and this one. So that's the first thing we want. So here's our 9 volt right there, which is going to be the red wire all the way here. The next one is going to be ground. So we're just giving it power basically right now. We can go to any of these two right here. So those will just work just fine, just like that. There we go. And we'll just say G and D. So like that, our unit is powered and it'll function perfect with your goggles, but it won't control your quadcopter if you do have the remote. Now the next two wires are going to allow the telemetry data to go through, battery voltage and everything you might want to go through. It's very simple here. And where we're going to want to set those up is going to be T4 and R4 right here. This is the best place to do it because usually if you're rocking another type of receiver, you would have it installed in this area right here. So we're going to set up the telemetry data on T4 and R4. So the first wire here is going to be an RX wire and the second wire is going to be a TX wire. So now we have an RX and a TX wire. So RX means it's going to receive data. The DJI unit will receive the data. And the T-pad will means this is the wire that the DJI Air unit is going to transmit data to your flight controller. So let's start off with the receive wire here. So the receive wire should go on a T-pad because we need the flight controller to transmit data for it to receive. So it's going to go on T4 just like that. So this transmits through this wire so this one could receive it. Now the next one is going to be TX, which is the DJI Air unit sending some data. And the place where we want to set that up is going to be R4. The numbers are very important. They should line up perfect here. So there we go. We're just going to go right here and right there. And like that, everything is set up. There's also a couple things you need to do in the beta flight. Just do a quick search. You'll figure out how to do that. Now, if you're just a guy who has the goggles and doesn't have the controller, then that's all you need to do here. You don't need to do anything else. But if you're the type of guy that has a controller, DJI controller, and also want to use that to control your quadcopter, then the next thing we want to do is we want to grab these last two wires. Now, the black wire here is going to go also on another ground. Now, the ground, I'd highly recommend you set it up on. It doesn't really matter, but uh, it's just best practice here would be this ground right here. So that's where I would set up that wire. And the last one is going to be actually SBUS because that's how it controls our quadcopter. And you want to set that up on R1 right here. So we're just going to go ahead and set that up just like that. Boom. There we go. And let's go ahead and make sense of this. So this is going to be SBUS. This is going to be the ground here. That's it. It's very simple. So we have power. You, you could just get away with using power if you don't have the controller. And now for telemetry, we have UART4. Remember that if you needed help from somebody, if you didn't know how to set up beta flight, just say my telemetry is on UART4. So any tutorial you'll see showing you how to set up beta flight, just look at UART4 because it'll show you the UARTs and just know yours will be on UART4.
four. So keep that in mind. Okay. And then the ground and the S bus is just, you know, just ground and S bus. That's it. That's going to control your quadcopter. And that's how you'd basically set up DJI air unit on this. Very simple. And um, yeah, it should get you going. All right, guys. So in this part of the video, we're going to be covering S bus, I bus, TBS, Crossfire, and also F port. So we're going to be covering all of those in this part, which it's going to be very simple because this is an F7 flight controller. So the first thing we're going to start off with power. Now the power will go exactly identical to any receiver you're running, whether it's a TBS or the R9 system, S bus, or even FlySky. So first of all, let's start out with the ground here. And the place where we're going to set those up is going to be in this area. This is how it was designed and basically meant for. We could also tell by the RSS iPad here. So if you had dedicated RSSI, you could install it right there. So first of all, let's start off with the power, like we said earlier. So here's our ground and it's going to be very simple. It's just going to go like this and it's just going to connect to the ground or the black wire of your receiver. So very important you do that. That's the first thing. Next thing we have is a five volt pad here, as you can tell, and that's going to go to our five volt rail and on any of the receivers, whether iBus, SBus, and TBS Crossfire. Now let's start with the SBus here since it's right in front of us. So the SBus again is going to be just follow along with the trend. So we're going to put it on R1 right here. So in the beta flights ports tab where you want to set up the serial RX is going to be on UART1. So as you can tell, that's where we have. So this is SBus here. Now we can also set up iBus here as well. So it's going to be the same thing. And TBS Crossfire Nano. So the TBS Crossfire has channel one and channel Two, channel one is going to go to this right here and channel two on the TBS. Let me just write that here, TBS and channel two is going to go on this right here. So that's where channel two would go. There we go. Just like that for the TBS channel one again, will go to the R1 and the channel two will go to the T1 here. However, if you're running F port, the documentation says to put it on R1, but that makes no sense to me. I think you might want to put it on a T1, but experiment because I, I don't think this is a, a serial UART they've created, but I'm pretty sure F port is going to go here. I could be mistaken, but that's the first place where I would put my uh, F port and not put it on the uh, R1 here. So just take note of that and just make sure uh, you test it out and see which one actually works. It might work on R1. I've never tried testing F port on F7 but usually they go on a T pad. So yeah, try both, see which one works here. And that's basically gonna conclude it for the receiver connection setup. Very simple on this board and I really like that and it's also a huge plus here. All right guys, and that's gonna conclude it for this video. Now make sure you check the links down below those greatly support the channel and come join my Patreon where I do 10 plus giveaways per month and new Patreons have their own separate premium giveaway, which is going to be pretty awesome and you get many, many more benefits and perks. So check the links down below those greatly support the channel and come join my Patreon and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.